OCO. It's how we say hello in Cherokee. Today we'll introduce you to an artist who uses historical documents as inspiration for his work. Plus we'll meet Cherokee Nation citizen and Miss Teen Oklahoma 2015 who's written a children's book to help kids overcome bullying. But first let's hear from Daryl Legg, a White House champion for change who's helping people in the Cherokee Nation find a turning point. Whenever you're you're called something like felon. Immediately, once you have to self-disclose that you're a felon, the feeling of being a little bit subhuman comes over you. Sometimes you feel like you're walking around with a big F on your forehead. I'm Daryl Legg, and I'm the director of the Economic Development and Reentry for Chair Connection Career Services. You know, I graduated high school here in uh, Salisaw uh, at Central High School with straight A's, class president, and uh, I just started partying. And next thing you know, you was uh, doing methamphetamines just so you could drink longer and stay up longer and drink more beer. And it, um, it just got out of control. And I ended up going to prison in uh, 94 uh, for uh, possession of methamphetamine. I was standing in line at the bookstore when uh, a lady approached me from Cherokee Nation Voc Rehab. She happened to know me, we worked together in, in uh, years past, and she said, Daryl, didn't you just get out? And I said, yes, and she said, are you a, considered a chemical dependent? And I said, yeah, I guess so. And she said, well, we can help you get your schooling paid for through Voc Rehab. The reentry is a program that was developed to help uh, incarcerated Cherokees for when they get out of prison. In career services, one of the barriers that we have that qualifies you for our program is being an ex-offender. So it just kind of fit to be with our program because we're all about getting jobs, getting people employed and self-sufficiency. So you gotta separate your mentality from where you were incarcerated to where you are today. If you make people like you, they wanna be around you. I don't really hardly ever go into telling war stories because it's nothing I'm proud of. And people wanna, uh, they wanna brag and say, uh, how proud they are of me because of what I'm doing now. I'm really doing what I should have been doing all along. Well, I was raised up in Chewy, Oklahoma. All in all, it was a pretty good childhood. I would kind of got into the wrong crowd, you know. It got to work. Uh, it was more important to, you know, drink and get high. It wasn't very long to work. The anger and the drugs and the alcohol was more controlling than anything in my life, you know. And I was just to a point where I wished that I could just uh, actually just die somehow, you know. You know, I've, I've thought about that every day. And I still think about it. Take something drastic when you're that far out there, you know, for you to really realize that something's wrong, you know. I was asking myself one day, and I, was, I prayed about it, and asked God, I said, you know, I know there's a, a better me inside there. It's almost like we was talking right now. He said, uh, he said, you see where your decision had brought you? He said, uh, why don't you turn your life around and let me run it, and let me show you where I'll take it. And if I remember right, it's like uh, 19 years, five months, and seven days. And uh, I just got out on July 2nd this year. Dale Six Killer is one of our best success stories since I've been here. He uh, would easily be told no in every situation if it wasn't for his tribe helping him. He came through these front doors is how it happened. And uh, he just walked in, really didn't have any kind of direction on what to do, how to go about getting help, how to go about getting a job. He come out motivated. There wasn't much coaching that was needed with him. We got him some clothes got him hooked up, got him stabled at a motel, uh, got him some food, and uh, everything else Dell has done on his own. It, it's not so much as being hard, as uh, it's me kind of trying to catch up. One of the biggest things was I prayed about helping people out. God just opened up the doors to where now I'm, uh, I'm in drug court. My, my job title is a supervision officer, and, uh, it's a really important job, and uh, there's a lot of things that, that I'm having to catch on to. Uh, it's kind of like putting me in a position to where 
where, where I used to be. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm having to be the, the guy that uh, has to get on some of these guys. And I'm really not used to that yet, but uh, it, it'll come around, you know. So I'm uh, trying my best to do the things that God's called me to do. I'm never proud of anything that I did. Um, I'm proud of where I am today. I enjoy the fact that I'm able to go over there and talk to the chief of police anytime I want to. You know, I consider him a friend, he's a colleague, me work for the city or, or being an elected official and him work for the city. I try to really shut out a lot of the, a lot of the memories that I've had uh, from a long time ago because none of it was pleasant and it's nothing that, you know, to brag about or boast of, that's for sure. In uh, 2014, uh, President Obama sent out uh, nominations for people that are, for their reentries, for their efforts on reentry to employment. It was overwhelming because I got to bring my family with me. You know, they had never been to Washington, D.C. and to really um, just be recognized for the efforts on this front because it's so passionate to me. You know, it's not like I wake up and go to work every day, probably like you. It's like you love what you do and who am I gonna get to help next? Living a normal life, I guess, is a sigh of relief. You know, I love being a dad and a family man and a husband and to be blessed like I am now. You know, I can't, I can't complain about anything. I just think that it's because I'm setting an example. That's my biggest success. It's not staying out of jail and it's not all this other stuff. It's being a good dad. Just the fact that people are excited to actually meet him because they know that he's helped people in the past and he just continues to help people. He's, he's an absolute superstar to all of us. That's what I'm most proud of. That's what I want to be remembered for. For more on housing and reentry assistance programs offered by the Cherokee Nation, go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned.